Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. December 7th, 2017. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Vikings to the Shrikings. Minnesota, from the Vikings to the Shrikings. Of course, I'm referring to Frankenwine, the ex-comedian who announced his resignation today and uh, attacked Trump and uh, Roy Moore, as you would expect. I mean, yeah, look, everyone knows the whole story. Uh, but I, I, that's one topic I'm going to cover is Frankenwine, just for a few minutes, because it's pretty clear what it is. It's all a road to Trump, which I said before everybody else in the media. I said it two weeks ago. Do I need the credit for it? No. But I told you this two weeks ago. The reason they're attacking both sides of the aisle, mainly Democrats, is so when they come for Trump, they can say, see, we're fair. I told you that two, three weeks ago. But because you don't want to believe I know what I'm talking about, many of you doubting Thomases, you don't want to believe me, but I see it all. I have the best crystal ball in the history of the media. And that's it. It's a given fact. So now let's move on to the big topic that's bothering me, which is Trump's embassy move. I said Trump's embassy move is imbecilic. And I know that I'm a man alone on this. There's very few who agree with me. All the neocon knee-jerkers, including those who attacked Trump for a year straight. Isn't it ironic that those, like the biggest man in talk radio, who ridiculed you as Trumpers, Trumpeteers, Trumpettes, Trumpsters, Biscuits, is now his biggest bootlicker, at his radio studio supporting the move it's very easy to sit in your radio studio on your fat behind while the country will burn to the ground one country after the other is gonna catch fire because of this idiotic move Trump's embassy move is imbecilic you know there's a big saying you wanna do what's right you wanna do what's smart what Trump did was neither right nor smart and it was done not so much because he was pushed by Sheldon Adelson the uh, billionaire gambling magnate from Las Vegas and Macau, and probably by Jared Kushner, and God knows what forces behind Jared want this to happen and why. It was because it's a very smart move, if you're in trouble politically, is to cause disturbances somewhere else in the world. Every president has been known to do this. You don't remember Bill Clinton? You don't remember what he did when he got in trouble with Monica Lewinsky? What did he do? What did he do? I'm asking you, what did he do? What did he do? You forgot already what Bill Clinton did? Ginned up a war with Muhammad Gaddafi, remember? Bombed a uh, aspirin factory to get her off the headlines? You don't remember that. I do. The reason I love elephants is because I have a memory like an elephant, unlike everybody else in the media who seems to have a collective amnesia with regard to what they said yesterday about other presidents being Machiavellian. And today, they don't remember. They get caught in their own hypocrisy. But I'm not here to worry about the other guy in the media. I'm here to tell you that something's wrong here. Trump's embassy move is imbecilic. The issue is timing. Even if it makes sense to announce this that Jerusalem is the eternal capital of the Jewish people. Why now? Why did he have to do this now in December of 2017? He didn't have to do it. Why was it on the agenda? Why was it? Why did he have to give a speech yesterday about it? Why? The timing. Think about the timing. Is the world at peace right now? Are we at peace with North Korea right now? Is there domestic harmony right now? No. This, this disturbance is all over the world, as there always will be in the world so why is he doing this imbecilic thing now it's more threatening than you may imagine to say that well Jerusalem is the eternal capital of Jewish people we know that and then to say he's gonna move the US Embassy to Jerusalem in a few years why now this could be the biggest mistake this administration has ever made unless they're so cunning that they want to trigger a Middle East conflict to distract us from Mueller's investigation 
This decision invokes Sun Tzu's five essentials to victory, where he writes, quote, He will win who knows when to fight and when not to fight. Timing is paramount in war and foreign relations. Choose the wrong time, and it can have dire consequences. Who is pushing him to do this now? Why does Israel itself need this trouble right now? Israel's in relative harmony right now. Why does Israel need this? Do you think most Israelis wanted this? They did not. Why does the U.S. need this trouble right now? Must be, we be the tail that is wagged by the Israeli dog? Why would Jordan need this trouble right now? The king of Jordan is an anti-Islamist. The king of Saudi Arabia is an anti-Islamist. They are our greatest ally in the war against radical Islam. They both opposed this statement and this move, as did I. Now, whether you believe that this is correct from a religious point of view is irrelevant. What is important right now is world peace and stability. Moreover, this move by Trump will directly cause a resurgence of the Ottoman Empire under Erdogan in Turkey, who has already emerged and said it will be a red line for Muslims. This announcement alone should be enough to reconsider this stupidity. You might not care about Erdogan or Muslims, but you should know that Jerusalem is home to holy sites for Muslims, Christians, and Jews alike. Take into consideration that Muslims make up one-fifth of the world's population. When the leader of one of the most powerful Muslim nations with a strong military says it's a red line, I would have thought twice about making the statement out. Why would we want to antagonize Turkey right now? Turkey is an ally of Israel. Unbeknownst to many is that Turkey wields an incredibly powerful military. Turks are historically known for their warrior society. The Israelis know this and have been at peace with Turkey for a while. It is a tense peace, but they trade with each other and are not at war with one another. Along with Erdogan, our Arab allies, Jordan and Saudi Arabia, are opposed to this statement and this suggested move of the embassy to Jerusalem. Do you believe that the average Israeli wants their embassy in Jerusalem? So really, who wants the embassy moved? A group of fanatical religious people, a group of fundamentalist Christians who believe it will usher in the rise of the Antichrist and the end of the world as we know it, and never forget, never ever forget the military-industrial complex. Never ever forget the military-industrial complex, which is why Lindsey Graham supports it all of a sudden. John McCain, the lunatic, supports it all of a sudden. Why do they support it? Money. Think of the cash register ringing for their uh, military-industrial uh, friends. This is a very strange decision coming at this time. And I'll repeat that there's a great difference between what is politically intelligent and what is intelligent from a religious point of view. The world is unstable enough today. We do not need more instability. And this decision and statement by Trump could trigger a war in the Middle East. I hope it doesn't. That's the main topic. Now, of course, the Roy Moore thing. I know. Please don't call me and tell me what I said three weeks ago. Is already a genius from WABC saying what I said three weeks ago because he heard it on another radio show this morning. He's already at talk shows. They're going after Franken because of Roy Moore. No kidding. No kidding. I'll send you a box of Krispies in the mail with a little, uh, what do you people want? A badge for dumbness? I don't care about Franken. What you also don't know is they can replace Franken with someone far to the left of him. That's how smart you are. I love all of the talk shows celebrating. Oh, it's all the liberals going. Look at that. Oh, look at that. They're getting one liberal. They're all hypocrites. They're all hypocrites. They're all hypocrites. Yeah, wait till they start falling on the other side. They're all hypocrites. All hypocrites, them liberals. You're telling me there's no such behavior on the conservative side? Are you joking? Are you joking? You want me to start naming a few of the things that you already know and forgot, especially from those espousing the fact that it's only on the left side of the aisle that these things happen? Shall I talk about pills? You want me to start going on pills right now? I won't do it. I don't have to do it. But if you people have a collective amnesia about your side of the aisle, then you're really stupid. You know, there's a saying by a great poet. If you can keep your head when all those around you are losing theirs and blaming it on you, then you'll be a man, my son. I have not varied in my willingness to walk alone. I have not varied in my willingness to say it like it is. I have not varied in my willingness to call him as I see him. I've done this for 24 years. It would be very easy to sit here like another stooge in the media and say, Yeah, yeah, Israel, yeah, Trump, you're a hero. Yeah, Israel, yeah, yeah Israel, yeah, yeah. What a brave thing to do. Yeah, Israel, yeah. Rah, rah, Israel. Rah, rah, sis, boom, bah. 
So easy to do. That shows no courage. It shows no brains, and it shows no discernment. It's much harder to walk alone and say it like it is. Stupid is what it is. On what basis would you support moving the embassy to Jerusalem? Tell me why. Who will you make happy when you do that? Six rabbis in Brooklyn? Twelve qu Christian fanatics somewhere in, the, in America? And, of course, the military-industrial complex, which loves and feeds off war? That is why I say, again, Lindsey Graham supports it. Man who hated Trump all along now, and, and of course, a, a great supporter of the military-industrial complex. John McCain, an opponent like a crazed buzzard against Trump, suddenly loves this now because supports the military-industrial complex. Why? We just moved a military base to Israel a few weeks ago. Did you know that? Oh, yeah, you forgot that already? You can't put two and two together? The U.S. has a military base in Israel now. When did that happen? Oh, a little while ago. What were they getting ready for? Well, it's all orchestrated. I guess you know, the only way you can get money from the military is have a war. In order to have a war, you got to stir up the hornet's nest wherever you can. Then you need military, more military, more. The budget's not broken enough. We need more and more and more money for More and more weapons, more and more bombs. But I know you only want to talk about Frank and wine. And so, not to disappoint you, and to play Radio 101, the kindergarten of radio. We'll do the kindergarten of radio for you, since apparently most listeners have not even gone to the first grade of thought. It's getting so depressing to see the comments on Twitter and Facebook and articles I write, written primarily by my opponents in radio, who use front groups and front names to write these things. It's so depressing to see how idiotic and what a kindergarten level they're writing at it's hard not to fall down to their level, but if they keep it up, I will disclose things about them. They'll wish to God they were not born. They keep this up. I will expose things about these people who are doing it. They will wish they were never born on this earth. I may be a man alone. I may be the only person in the major conservative media who does not share the same agent as the others do. You want me to go into that one day? Keep pushing me. Keep pushing me. Keep undermining me behind the scenes. You'll be wishing you weren't born. The apartments will come out. The shared agent will come out. Lots of things will come out of the woodwork that you'll wish were never, ever disclosed. Keep pushing me. Because I'm like the Samson of radio. I'm all alone. And I'm facing Goliaths everywhere I turn. I do not share an agent. I'm a man alone. Well, of, somehow I've survived. Whether I will survive tomorrow is God's decision, not mine. And I will keep saying it like it is. I wrote God, Faith, and Reason. People read the book. Trust me, of all the talk show hosts in the world, has anyone ever written a book about God or faith, let alone reason? I don't think so. So please don't lecture me about the Bible and God and Israel. I know enough about it that I wrote a book about it. And all the Johnny-come-lately experts on the subject never studied the Bible the way I did. But the Bible has nothing to do with the survival of America right now. I know you want to hear it, that God doesn't love us anymore because we're no longer a moral people. I've, I've seen that argument. But what does that have to do with Trump suddenly declaring that Jerusalem is the eternal capital of Israel? What the heck does that have to do with anything right now? Why did he have to do this now? Why did he have to do this now? It's all about timing, don't you understand? Didn't we question every move of Obama for those eight horrible years? Didn't we see through everything he did? Weren't you with me every step of the way as I explained to you that Obama was doing certain things at certain times for various reasons, including reasons you couldn't understand? Remember this, if you don't mind. My job is not to appease my listeners by trying to figure out what they want to hear, which is the easy way out. That's kindergarten radio. My job is to inform and to lead the listeners. Do you understand that? I led you as an army to the voting booth to vote for Donald Trump for one straight year. While those who are now licking his boots opposed him. They called you Trumpers, Trumpeteers, Trumpets. They backed other candidates. Now they're kissing his behind because they're Machiavellian. Do you understand the difference between truth and and falsehood, that's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to get from me. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth.
Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Conservatives laud Trump's Jerusalem move. Conservatives? You mean neocon warmongers? Everything is about timing. Do you understand that? There's a 1995 law that requires the United States to move its embassy to Jerusalem. That was a long time ago. And to do it now is the question. I don't doubt there's a law. But why would Trump suddenly do it now in early December of the year 2017 when he's in so much trouble politically? Tell me why. You can't follow the the connection between the two? Clinton, for God's sakes, bombed an aspirin factory when Monica Lewinsky became too big a story. Do you understand that? I, this, is, this is politics 101. You know, if you can see the truth, what do you want me to do? If I see the truth, tell you something different? Trump's embassy move is, is imbecilic, number one, and symbolic, number two. I don't know how in the world you don't see what I'm saying. WABC, New York City, Ron, go ahead, you're on the air. Yeah, Doctor, I just happen to think that uh, Netanyahu's behind the move and, uh, you know, making the call. And I respect him as a military man as, and as a politician. I think he knows a lot about that region, more about that region than we do. Well, what do you need to know about the region that, that you don't know? What, what, do you, what more do you need to know about the region? That this is going to bring more peace to the area or, or less peace? Well, don't you think that he, he, he wouldn't want a war? Well, let, let's forget Netanyahu. Under, under, under any other circumstance, I would not talk about Netanyahu, but you brought him up. I'm not a big fan of his. I know about his great military history, but I also know about the corruption allegations that are swirling around him. And secondly, I as an American put America first, which is what Trump said he was going to do, not Israel first. I don't like the tail wagging the dog. Why are we being dragged into another Middle Eastern situation? Why? Why now? Why? I don't care what Netanyahu thinks right now. I care about America. America first. Wasn't that Donald Trump's platform? Well, this is Israel first. How's that? You can take that to the bank. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. To live and die in Radio Land. Welcome back to the Savage Nation. All you brave warmongers, neocons who want others to die for your textbook views, it's unbelievable to me. Wrong time to move U.S. embassy or talk about it will provoke violence and instability. Imbecilic. Yeah, it's not so imbecilic if you're Machiavellian. If you need to get a headline changed and start a little conflagration here and there, why so be it? It's been done by every president. Going back probably a long time. So we can argue over it. And I'll tell you what, <clears throat> I respect the fact that you differ uh, differ with me. Uh, uh, your opinion differs with me on this Jerusalem thing. And I don't mind arguing with you, but I'll deal with the facts. But if you get personal and start attacking me, I'm going to hang up on you. And it's the same with the bloggers on Twitter and Facebook. You can disagree with my position. But if you start slurring me, I'm going to turn off my Twitter and Facebook accounts. I don't need them. I lived without them for 23 years. You know, I had a life before Twitter and Facebook. I never exposed myself to the cyber bullies. But I'm not a porn star, and you're not going to shame me into changing my opinion. And if you keep it up, because I know many of you are front names for my competitors in the media, I know it for a fact. I will release information about my competitors in the business. You're not going to like, so I'm going to warn you right now. If you're, if, you're, if you're one of those teams of bloggers working for my competitors, be careful. Don't stir me up with personal attacks. Because I got information and facts about some of my antagonists that you're not going to like hearing. And nor will they. Let's argue over the issues. But don't start attacking me or my family personally. You're not going to like the results. Now let's go to the issue exactly. What am I talking about? Ayal, WABC, welcome to the Savage Nation. You have the floor. Speak your piece. 
Hi, good afternoon, Dr. Savage. Uh, so first, I'd like to say I uh, respect your opinion. I'm not going to attack you personally, but I listened to your show when you first started today. And what I heard from you was, uh, you know, you were attacking about this decision. I I'm not going to go why Donald Trump decided that this is a good timing for the United States to do so. I'm speaking from the, an Israeli point of view. I grew up in Israel. I served the military there. And I'm going to start by telling you, peace process. That's what the Palestinians say is going to hurt the peace process. Could you please tell me where is the peace process? Because I'm looking for it. And I've been following it. Well, it's very interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting with the peace process is, is that you're not in the West Bank right now with rubber bullets. I did serve there, though. I did serve there, though. Well, of course you did. But you don't want to serve there now, do you? No, I don't. And you know what? All right, so what I'm saying is if you have a relative calm, why would you disturb the calm right now? Because I'm asking you a question. Uh, you know, you're a very smart human being. I do listen. No, I'm not that smart. I'm just a person with a strong opinion. I know some facts. I'm asking why would Trump all of a sudden out of the blue make this an issue now in early December? I, you know that politicians are all Machiavellian thinking about their own behinds mostly, right? Yes, but I have no idea. Wait, well, no, let's have a, a discussion like two men would in a cafe in Tel Aviv. Netanyahu, is he a perfect man? No. He Does he not have a lot of scandals surrounding him in Israel? Of course he does. So, look at, so why would Netanyahu want this right now? Netanyahu, it's not Netanyahu. You said something at the beginning of the show that uh, it's not both sides of Israel. It's only the fanatics who are up to that. If you look at the news today, I'm very involved in Israeli politics. This is not true. Both sides are very, very happy with that decision. Now, is, is that the right timing? I don't know. But you tell me as a... Someone of, okay, so the Israelis are happy that Big Brother, Big Brother in the U.S. is suddenly saying, great, go, go, Israel. But I'm asking, is it good for, for the United States and is, good, is it good for world peace? And why would the king of Jordan, who is not an enemy of Israel, and the king of Saudi Arabia, who suddenly come around to our side, why would they call this a blunder? I'm going to answer you as far as the King of Jordan. The King of Jordan is worried, and he was always worried about anything with Palestinians, simply because Jordan is Palestine. I don't know if you know about about 80... No, no, I know the whole history of the Palestinians. I know about Black September. I know more than anyone else in the American media. I know about Black September, where more Palestinians were killed by the Jordanian military than have ever been killed in all the interchanges with Israelis. Trust me, I know a little bit more than you may expect about Israel. But the fact of the matter is, the King of Jordan is a modern man. He is not an Islamist. He is facing Islamists every day. You have to agree that he is not an enemy of Israel right now. Oh, not, not at all. He's not an enemy, but he's afraid of the noise and the mess that the Palestinians are going to cause because of that. So oh, so that's exactly my point. Why would Trump need to stir up noise and mess right now is the issue, Ayal. Why Israel needs to pay the price for someone else's peace? We look what do you mean pay the price? But you're not paying the price right now. You have relative calm in Israel right now. It's not. It's not, not true at all. They've been stabbing and shooting people in Israel, in Jerusalem. So, in other words, more stabbing and more shooting would be better? No, it's not. But my, my question to you, I was asking... Oh, so what? So, in other words, you want all-out war now with the Palestinians? Would that solve the problem, as most of the Bolani throwers in the radio business? They want war. Well, we'll find out who our enemies are and who our friends are. Aren't they going to go and list in the IDF and leave their microphone? Who's going to die for their beautiful views? It's your, it's your young Israelis are going to go there and die and fight. Yes, that's what you want, war. That's what you're going to have, more war. I don't know. I don't want war. What's a, when is a good time for that? Was it now? So now is a good time for war, I guess. It wasn't before. It's been from 1995. They keep on delaying it, delaying it. What, what's a good time? for? Why is uh, so now is a very good time for a nice little war in Israel. And, and so you're basically confirming my point. This whole object, the whole object here was to do this now. I questioned the timing, Ayal. If you read my article carefully, I did not question the legality nor the legitimacy. I questioned the timing, Ayal. Well, let me send you God, faith, and reason. I don't think we're going to go away enemies or friends. I think we're not changing each other's viewpoint. But at least we had a good discussion. Let's go to George on WFNC in North Carolina. The home of the, uh, I think the Special Forces train there, don't they? F in North Carolina? I believe so. George, FNC Radio Line 4, you disagree with me? Tell me why. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Savage, and I listen to you quite uh, a lot. In fact, I have a couple of your books. But I'm a, uh, first of all, I'm a retired Korean War veteran. I'm an octogenarian, and I served in the Korean War and Vietnam. I received the Bronze Star Medal in Vietnam. 
And I'm saying that the timing of Donald Trump's move to make uh, Israel, uh, Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, is right on time. Because 22 years ago, when the Congress passed the law, the President George H. Bush, Bill Clinton, George Bush, Obama, and all the rest of those lying people told lies to the American people that they were going to move the the uh, embassy to Jerusalem and make Israel the capital. Uh, I mean, but I mean, I hear all of this, and we respect your war service, and we know you're a hero. I don't mean that cynically, but why the timing? Why now, George? Okay, because Donald Trump is a chosen vessel. The, the Democrats didn't want him. The Republicans didn't want him. Well, well, let's stop with the biblical chosen vessel, please. Let's not go there. I, let's stop with the chosen vessel already. I'm talking about from a political point of view. Why do this now? Point of view, the timing is correct because Donald Trump and Mike Pence are a chosen vessel. And all right, all right, well, okay, chosen vessel. We can't, you know, you can't argue over a statement like that. I don't believe they're chosen vessels. I think the two politicians who got lucky, period. And by the way, by popular vote, Hillary won, incidentally. So you want to get into the chosen vessel business. Are you dismissing the other side of America, which is more than 50% of the voters? They're all stupid and unchosen? Michael. Michael. No, no, you've got to understand something. This is a divided nation. And if we're going to do what Obama did for eight straight years, which is say the other side doesn't exist, they have no valid points on anything, this country will fall apart even worse than it has already. And I respect you for your service. I'm sending you God, faith, and reason. Sorry I disappointed you with my viewpoint. But that, my friend, is something you should respect, which is my willingness to stand out here and express my viewpoint, how unpopular it may be. And I'm going to say it again. I march to a different drummer. I used to love all the 60s. Oh, march to a different drummer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, now when you find the guy marching to a different drummer, you crucify him. Most of you who supported me now want to crucify me for this because I'm not marching in lockstep with the Republican administration. And by the way, this is not Donald Trump. This is the Republican administration. Every last one of them, including those never Trumpers, are supporting him. Lindsey Graham, anti-Trumper, loves the Israel thing. Madman McCain. Anti-Trumper loves the Israel thing. Have you not followed the connections between their support and their background? You have to understand that there's always something more behind things than meets the eye. And I am questioning not the leg legality of the issue. I'm questioning the timing of the issue. I also respect the King of Jordan enormously. I have for a long period of time. I've been amazed that this man has been able to sustain his power with his uh, position as king while being a Western-oriented man and to uh, maintain his Muslim identity and religion and to not cave in to the Islamists. He is the model for what the Arab nations should become. And he uh, thinks that Trump blundered on this statement at this time. So I don't know what else to say. I've given you the, the my position. I don't know anyone, no one agrees with me. I can see what people are saying. They all agree because they're knee jerkers. You listen to people in the media and it's easy to say, oh, I support Israel right or wrong. Every, every conservative, oh yeah, the litmus test has been passed. The kosher stamp goes on your head. I support Israel right or wrong. Israel right or wrong. Israel, no, that's not the issue. The issue is the timing. It's that simple. So why now? Well, I'm asking you again, why now? This is the one question I'm asking that I'm not getting an answer to. You're answering a different question. But before we go back to this one, I, I did not do what I said I would do, which is talk about Frankenwine, which is why uh, Frankenwine is resigning now, which I know because three weeks ago I told you why all of a sudden they all wanted him out. They wanted Frankenwine out so they can then say when they come for Trump, you see, we took down some of our own for lesser charges than those directed at the president. It's time for him to leave. It, it, again, it's, you know, it's radio, it's politics 101, kindergarten politics. You can look right through this and see it. So let's play Frankenwine now uh, in uh, the clip where he is whining away in 02, uh, Jim. I, of all people, am aware that there is some irony in the Brian. fact that I am leaving while a man who has bragged on tape about his history of sexual assault sits in the Oval Office 
and a man who has repeatedly preyed on young girls' campaigns for the Senate with the, with the full support of his party. But this decision is not about me. All right, let's stop it's about the that. people of Minnesota. Right, take a walk. There's always room for you at Saturday Night Dead. Saturday Night Dead. I hear they're starting a new show for you, Al, called Saturday Night Dead, and you'll be the star. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel. Now back to Michael Savage on Talk Radio 560 KSFO. Everybody's talking about superfoods. You've heard the word superfood, superfood. Well, what are those? Well, they're nutritionally dense foods that are especially beneficial to your health. I've told you that beets are one of the most powerful superfoods that you can put into your body. Why? Because they're loaded with an important nutrient. That increases your blood flow, which increases your energy. But who wants to eat a pile of beets every day? Not me, but now you can get the energy benefits of beets in a powerful, concentrated superfood drink, Super Beets. Only Super Beets is made from beets grown to exacting standards, then concentrated into superfood crystals. Super Beets promotes the body's own natural ability to produce healthier circulation for increased energy and stamina all day long. So listen, if you want the benefits of a powerful superfood, simply call 800 800- Four eight one zero five zero four. Write it down. Eight hundred four eight one zero five zero four. Or go to savagelovesbeats dot com. And with your first order, you're going to get another thirty day supply of Super Beats free and indicator strips to test to see how they're working for you and free shipping. Eight hundred four eight one zero five zero four. Or go to savagelovesbeats dot com. So we're talking about Frank and Wine resigning. And the Dems pushing him out now, and that's for two reasons. One, so they can claim the high road when they go after Trump and say, see, we took out some of our own, and you people won't take out someone who's worse than him. I said this three weeks ago. Now, of course, it's all over the radio like they discovered it. You want me to play the tape to prove who said it first? I don't have to. I don't have to. I know I did. All, you know, the truth shall set you free. I know I did it first. So that's the point is, that's it. That's number one. And number two, the, and the next reason is they want to replace Frankenstein, Frankenwine, with someone even more radical or more corrupt than him. So they got rid of the clown. He'll go back to television. They're going to create a new show called Frank, Saturday Night Dead. And that'll be the end of that one. And we're also talking about the embassy. And none of you agree with me. There's not one person listening to this show around the country, around the world, who agrees with me. So what is the point? We're going to argue all day long? What Trump has done is a disaster. It's a political disaster. Ciro on WABC, do you agree or disagree with me? I disagree with you just in the fact of a couple things. Um, I think the timing isn't bad because there's chaos going on now that we can find out who our true allies are. Uh, what, what do you mean? I don't understand this stupid statement. That find out who our allies are. What does that mean? True. Through allies, I said, Mike. Mike, see, you're getting upset, and I'm trying to... I'm getting upset at the idiocy that I'm hearing. What do you mean who our true allies are? Yeah. So, in other words, by, by following your logic, we'd like to find out who our enemies are, and then what? What, kill them all? Well, you, well, you guys... No, no, why don't you just kill them all? Drop a hydrogen bomb on them. I... I, I never heard such stupidity in my life. Well, we'll find out who our enemies are. We know who our enemies are. What should you do now? Drop a bomb on Pakistan and Iran? All you warmongering neocon idiots? Go drop an H-bomb on Pakistan. And while you're at it, drop one in Iran. All you neocon warmongers. You're crazy. Your solution to every problem is reading a comic book. You're giving me a comic book solution. We'll find out who our enemies are. We know who our enemies are. So, and then what? You want to stir them up so we go to war with them? Like a moron. Go stir up North Korea now. You are, so you can drop an H-bomb on North Korea, too, while you're at it. Idiocy. I never saw anything like it, like the world's lost its head. There's no sense of balance anywhere. Everything's imbalanced. It's like a imbalanced people. The nation of imbalanced people. They don't even understand what they're saying. Find out who our enemies are, who our friends are. What's a mystery? 
It's a mystery to you who your friends and allies are. It's not a mystery to me. And then when you find out who your enemies are, what? Kill them all? Drop an H-bomb on them or an A-bomb? Machine gun them all? Stupid. Think through what you're saying. Stop repeating like robots what you hear on radio. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Thank you for listening to the show on Really Big Something Channel.